Okay, we're going to work on the various permutations that involve um, titration data. There are several types of calculations that you can do when you do a titration. It's all based on the notion that the number of moles is given by the molarity of the solution that's being titrated uh, times the volume of the solution. So that gives rise to four equations. In a titration, you reach equivalence when whatever is being titrated has been titrated by the same amount of moles. So for example, if you have base on one side, you have acid on the other. So the, base, the moles of base have to equal the moles of acid. That's what this N1 and N2 symbolizes, the moles of substance. So in the titration, they have equal moles. Uh, another way of showing moles is by saying molarity times volume. So you can have M1B1 equals M2B2, or you can have one side as moles and the other side as uh, molarity times volume, and every permutation of that. In the first problem that we got from our textbook, 479B, which comes from Brown and others, 10th edition, question uh, B and C of 479, uh, we're titrating hydrochloric acid with a sample of magnesium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid. So we showed the chemistry first of all. Two hydrochloric acids titrate one magnesium hydroxide to form magnesium chloride and water. The net equation, the net ionic equation is H plus combining with OH minus to form water. Any acid-base reaction boils down to this reaction, which will explain why I use this uh, conversion factor here. At any rate, the data tells us we have 0.128 molar solution of uh, hydrochloric acid, and we're asked how many mLs of that hydrochloric acid is going to be needed to titrate 2.87 grams of magnesium hydroxide. First step is to find out how many moles of magnesium hydroxide we have. So here's the mass, here's the molar mass. Mass divided by molar mass gives you the number of moles right here. So we have 4.9 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of magnesium hydroxide. But because magnesium hydroxide has two equivalents of hydroxide, we're going to find out how much hydroxide there is. Why? Because we're really solving this equation. So we're trying to find the moles of OH minus so that we can equate it to the moles of H plus. Somebody in the last class said, sir, how come you skipped the stoichiometry 2 to 1? Well, I didn't. What I did is I did the stoichiometry over here. I used the net equation. I ignored all the spectator anions and the cations. So anyway, by multiplying by 2, we find out how many equivalents of OH minus are present. So this number, 4.92 times 10 to the minus 2, gets turned into 9.84 times 10 to the minus 2, because every one mole of magnesium hydroxide produces two moles of hydroxide. Then we use our equation. M1B1 is equal to N. We already know N. We just calculated it over here. We know M is 0.128, so the only thing that's missing is the V1. We plug in all the numbers, we isolate the V1, and we find that it takes 0.768 liters of the uh, hydrochloric acid solution to titrate that many moles of hydroxide. And because our answer is in liters, we can convert it to milliliters by multiplying by 1,000, so we get 769 milliliters. It's only three significant figures allowed, so that's how we reported it. In the second question of this nature, uh, we're titrating, uh, it's not an acid-base reaction, but we have two soluble salts mixed together to form one soluble salt and an insoluble salt. So, uh, silver chloride is insoluble. Uh, we're told we have 25-28 mLs of the silver nitrate. We don't know its molarity. Uh, and we're told we have 785 milligrams of potassium chloride. So we first, we begin by converting the 785 milligrams into grams, so it's 0.785 grams. We divide by the molar mass of potassium chloride. Here's potassium, here's chlorine. And we get that there's 1.05 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of potassium chloride. We then use this equation. The M1B1 refers to the silver nitrate, and the N refers to the number of moles of KCl. So it's up to you at this point, whenever you're doing one of these problems, you're going to be forced to choose one of those four permutations of, of, the, uh, of this equation, of the M1B1 equals to, is equal to N. And the, number, the, subs the subscripts just tell you which side of the equation you're dealing with so you don't mix up your variables. So we know the, um, the volume of the solution that was used, 25 one thousandths of a liter, 25.8 milliliters, that is. The molarity we're trying to find. Here's the number of moles which we calculated here. We isolate M1, and we get that it's 0.408 molar. We're only allowed three significant figures, so it's 0.408 
moles per liter. The third question, uh, D, in number 79, we're titrating a strong acid with a strong base. And before I continue, I just want to recap what the seven strong acids are. There are only, stre there are only seven strong acids in the universe. And the mnemonic for memorizing them is no so clock clock will breathe. No so clock clock will breathe. And if you write them in that order, uh, the subscripts are three, four, four, three. Nitrate, sulfate, perchlorate, chlorate. You put an H in front of everything, and for sulfuric, there's two hydrogens. Nitrate, sulfuric, perchlorate, chlorate, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic acid are the strong acids. Everything else is a, is a weak acid. If it's not a strong acid, it's a weak acid. That's all you have to memorize. That's good to memorize it that way because um, in university you, you get a lot of those acid-base type problems. It's good to feel confident about which ones are the strong acids, which ones go to completion when you react. So here we have a strong acid with a strong base. Uh, the mole you're given the molarity and how many mLs of the acid are used. And you're asked how many moles of potassium hydroxide is going to react with this quantity of acid. So you require M1V1 is equal to N2. Uh, plug in the numbers, and we find that it takes that many moles. So now we have moles of, this is how many moles of potassium hydroxide is going to be necessary. So if you know how many moles you need, you need to multiply by the molar mass to find how many grams of the potassium hydroxide you need. So here's the molar mass of potassium hydroxide. Here's the potassium is the oxygen and the hydrogen. You add them all up and multiply it by this number and it tells you how many grams of potassium hydroxide you're going to need. Again, you down to three significant figures. So we need 0.274 grams of potassium hydroxide. Any questions? Yeah. How do I isolate M1? Whenever you have a variable, uh, two variables on one side, you're multiplying the two variables. So the rules of transposition say that if something is a multiplication on one side, it becomes a division on the other side. So you can have, for example, AB, ABC is equal to D, and if you're asked to isolate for B, then A and B are being multiplied by B. Uh, so therefore, if you put them on the other side, they turn into a division. So D is equal to A over C. Yeah, it's a trans simple transposition. And remember, uh, uh, really, all of these equations, this M1V1 equals N2, or uh, M2V2 is equals M1V1, it's all coming back to N1 equals N2. And N is equal to M times V. So you're just subscripting the original variables to attribute it to either the base or the acid. And then you have to pick, depending what type of problem they give you, you have to find out which one of these applies. Really, you don't even need the formulas. Which really all you all you really need to recognize is that the moles of acid have to equal the moles of base, and that's what you're doing. You're doing two separate calculations to find that out. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Stop there.